Hi everyone, today it's going to be all about the metal. I love metal. Anybody who knows me knows that I absolutely adore it. And I love all the things you can do with it. But today we're going to do flowers and I'm going to show you how to manipulate the metal to get great shapes. You don't have to just use them flat on your page. We're going to be using Tim Holtz um, dye here, the tattered florals. By the way, it's also fun to use, um, do it with the leaves too, and you can get shapes into the leaves. That's a lot of fun. I love using 10 Second Studio products. Absolutely adore all their products. This is, uh, you can get the metal in a roll. You, you can also get copper. You can get coloured metals. All different. Um, you can buy them singly or in packs. Packs like this, for instance, that have colours like Peacock. Hot pink diamond, bronze god and golden nugget, so you can buy them like that. You can't do any of this, in my opinion, without your 10 Second Studio Humunga Killer Adhesive. This is fabulous stuff, don't waste this. Even the tiniest bit of it is so strong and wonderful to use in all your products. Below here you can see some of the different flowers I've made. Now some of these aren't joined because I wanted to be able to show you how I layer them up, what I do with them. And remember, you can make your, your, your flowers out of many things, obviously. But metal helps to support it. It does a wonderful job of supporting it. So, for instance, if you're making um, fabric flowers like this, you, it'll support that flower. It, you can shape it. You can work it. It gives it lots and lots of strength, lots of... Um, a body uh, you can combine it with leather I combine it with paper fab fabric, leather grunge board oh sorry not grunge board, grunge paper Tim Holtz grunge paper is another thing you really can't do without if you want some, a really really strong flower and you'll see where I'll use this on the backs of some of these because these are so strong you can use them for any application you don't have to be putting them in um, scrapbooks. I also want to show you with fabric and getting the beautiful shapes. I actually made this particular one to go with a layout, and you can. It's a lay. It's actually a mini book, and it's based on the um, uh, graphic 45 Once Upon a Springtime papers. You can see I've also used metal here to do the roof of the house. Um, I, and I've actually used Tyvek in here because it's very strong to cut out the house and used all my bits. So don't throw away any of your scraps. You can use it on so many projects. Um, just because you've cut it, a flower out, all that, all the extras on there, can all the extra bits on there, um, for instance on this, can be used to make other things. So... This is what I made this flower for. You can see where I'm going to use it and tone it in and layer it up and combine it. On my page, not sure how yet, I've got prima leaves here that I'll pop in behind. You can make them really tiny um, and pop leaves in behind. You can do what you like. So let's get on with it and I'll show you some of the things that you can do. We'll put some of this aside. We'll just go through a little bit of the basics when it comes to using metal. For instance, when you're using your dies, you really want to be aware of what side of um, the metal that you want. If you cut your metal face down, you're going to get a nice, smooth, rounded edge. If you cut with the colour up that you want, you're going to get an edge like this. You can see it on here better on one of these that I've made. Because the metal comes up this way, you're going to get the sharper edge. But when you sand off your colour, it's going to show up as an edge, which can be very attractive. But if you're after that really smooth edge so you can manipulate it, do what you want with it, and you don't like to have that edge on there, you can see that if I do this, you'll see what happens. That edge shows up quite clearly, but I can't have got one that's not sitting in front of me, so I can't do it. But if you sanded this, it's very rounded, 
very smooth. So watch with how, how you actually put your metal onto your, your die if you're using a die to cut it out. I'm just going to push these aside for a second and I'm going to show you how to apply Humongo tape to your metal and to your grunge board. So here we have the three pieces that I'd like to put together because some people have difficulty with this. So we have our Humongo Killer Tape, we have our piece of metal and we have our grunge paper. You can combine all three of these quite easily and then decide that you want to emboss them afterwards. It, they will easily go through these folders, all three layers, and um, there is no particular order that I like to do this in. Sometimes um, I like to emboss the whole piece first. You can see a piece here that I have embossed first, and I'll decide to cut it out later. Same with this. But in other cases, like I have actually cut it out and then decided where I'd like to place the metal. Um, again, this is proof that it works. You have your metal and you have your grunge paper on the back. And I decided that I wanted it to be um, get the circular action of this Tim Holtz folder. It's one of his cob folders. Um, and you have it in the middle. Of course, this makes for fabulous effects when you start sanding these. So when you sand them off, you're going to get cool effects. And you can place it better place them better if you wish to cut the flower first and then put it in your folder. But by all means you can use any method. Um, you can do it first like I said and then cut um, all your flowers out later. The pe people seem to have the most trouble with connecting these and it is actually very so simple. Put your metal down, peel up your tape, place it on the end of your work, like so, get it nice and firm, grab a brayer and start to just roll it on and roll it across your metal. This avoids all the bubbles and things that people seem to get. I, mean, I do the same process if I'm putting this onto fabric um, as here. Which has got a metal back. Leather goes on wonderfully on all of them, and you don't get any bubbles. And then you can take a bit of grunge board, peel off your back here, which I haven't got fingernails, but I'll give it my best shot. Here we go. Place it down again on the edge of that. Grab your roller again, grab your brayer, and run it across, pulling this out at the same time. And there you have your piece of metal attached to your grunge paper. And you've got something that's really, really tough, really fun to play with. Um, you, can, you can see over here where I have had made different effects on the on the different layers. Um, this one I've just uh, sanded the edges. This one I've actually put a pattern on behind and I've also embossed it. And these are just the plain ones. And I'll just layer these up however I want. Brag them through the middle. There are a ton of different centers you can put in there. There's so many centers that you could actually, you can bling them, you can pearl them, you can do what you like with them. There's lots of ways to make them. Fabulous. Ones like this, again, going through the layers. Actually, I think I've cut this on the Spellbinders one, that bottom one. Um, and I've got leather on the bottom, some fabric, some more leather with metal on it so that I can shape it and pull it. And this is metal so I can shape it and pull it. Where I've actually leave the, left those ones flat because they can sit in behind and use cogs. Lots of fun. Lots of fun to play with all these different um, shapes and sizes.